Thank you for introduction. Could you hear me? Yes, and we can see your slide. Please start. Thank you. Uh, let me begin. Good afternoon from Harbin. This is Yan Qing. It's my great pleasure to be here to talk about my research work. My talk is theoretical study of 2D photocatalysts for producing hydrogen. So here is the outline of my talk. First, background. The International Energy Agency reports that fossil fuels still provide most of the world's total energy demand. However, they will deplete in about 50 years. And this energy mainly, mainly derives from the burning of carbon and emits dangerous pollution. Fortunately, hydrogen can help to tackle these challenges. And uh, hydrogen demand has grown strongly since 2000. However, nowadays producing hydrogen mainly originates from fossil fuels. And the solar energy is a clean, climate-friendly, and very abundant energy resource to mankind. So it's a promising route to produce hydrogen is photocatalytic water splitting by utilizing solar energy. What is photocatalytic water splitting? An incident light excites an electron across the band gap and generates an electron hole pair. Then this electron diffuses to the solid water interface and dissociate into an unbound electron hole. The hole drives oxygen evolution reaction to generate oxygen. The electron drives hydrogen evolution reaction generating hydrogen. In the last few decades, great progress have been made on developing photocatalysts for water split. Before 2009, the published articles are only about 400, as seen in the figure. More and more researches have been reported in the last decade. Since 1972, many 3D photocatalysts have been developed. However, most of them cannot utilize visible light. Moreover, to assist HER and OER, the photogenerated carriers must migrate to surface. This results in a large amount of acetone recombination. However, the 2D materials have many advantages, such as large specific surface area, high carrier mobility, and the controllable interfaces. And the experiments help rule that 2D materials can enhance photocatalytic performances. In principle, 2D photocatalysts must satisfy four basic conditions. Thermodynamically stable, insoluble in water, the band gap larger than 1.23 EV, and the band edges must straddle water redux potentials. However, for practical applications, they must satisfy several other conditions. First, have the ability to utilize visible light as it accounts for more than 40% of solar energy compared to UV light. Have great carrier mobilities to reduce exciton recombination rate. Last, have low overall potential to ensure 
ATR and OER can be realized in experiments. However, expensive, expensive experiments are very expensive and time consuming. But theory, such as first principle calculations, can fast screen potential 2D materials with accuracy comparable to experiments. In fact, many 2D materials were first predicted by theory before they were synthesized, like graph fin and so on. To date, many 2D materials have been predicted to be photocatalysts, such as Group 3 monocalculonites, transition metal dicalculonites, and metal phosphorus tricalculonites, and so on. These, back, these figures are band edge alignments. Encouragingly, these monolayers have been synthesized experimentally. They are all promising photocatalysts. Hence, a lot of 2D photocatalysts have been designed. However, they are still behind the requirements for practical applica applications. Strong light harvest and great carrier mobilities are both urgently needed for efficient photocatalysts. Then introduce computational methods. The initial and the most important step is first principle calculations. First, build a crystal structure by crystal maker tools. Then perform geometry optimization to realize unit cell and atomic coordinates. We should select suitable functional and pseudo potentials to obtain prop photocatalysts. We should do convergence tests on the parameters like energy cutoff, key point, and the thickness of vacuum slab. This is the formation energy. E A X B Y is the energy total energies of A X B Y. E A and E B are the total energies of A and B. And delta E should be less than zero. Last, calculate electronic structures. To ensure that the designed materials can be obtained experimentally, we should evaluate stability with the conditions. For example, how distances are less than 0.2 EV per atom, no negative vibrational modes, and the energy profiles do not change with time. And then post-processing, according to these formulas, we can calculate optical absorption coefficient, band edge position, carrier mobility, exon bonding energy, Gibbs free energy change, last solar to hydrogen efficiency. It ABS is efficiency of light absorption, and it CU is carrier utilization. In the following, I'll introduce our research work. How we studied in this field, we all know doping and heterostructures are the feasible routes to find the novel photocatalysts. Using these methods, we have predicted many 2D materials. They have high carrier mobilities and strong optical absorption coefficients in visible light regions. For example, thousands of 2D materials have been predicted, and many have highlight harvest and greater carrier mobility, but their band edge positions are not suitable 
for water split and chemical substitution is the simplest way to design novel 2D materials. So we designed these two monolayers by replacing the phosphorus atoms of triphosphide with nitrogen atoms. And the stability have been examined by formation energy convex hull, phonon, and AIMD simulations in the visible light regions. They have strong optical absorption, which is 10 times those of other typical materials showing light. They are promising photocatalysts for producing hydrogen, like this. For HER, at U equals zero, the data G is about minus 0 0.26 EV. And the potential provided by photo-generated electrons, 0 0.41 V, the, the energy profiles becomes downhill. So HER can proceed without external electric field. For OER, the limiting potential is 2.53 V. So over potential is 1.3 V. The, the potential provided by the holes is about 0.33 V. So OER needs an external electric field. Many pairs cited our about two papers positively, especially the advanced functional materials reveals our works and the high praise uh, our works also. And the best of all, our pred uh, predicted SNN3 monolayer stimulates the interests of one at all. So they conducted an in-depth study of a single transition metal atom embedded artificial holy as an N3. And they found that four structures have highly selective and active electrocatalytic nitrogen reduction. However, it may be difficult to synthesize the materials designed by chemical substitution. And as solution is the most practical method to design 2D materials in experiments. So based on first principle calculations, we demonstrated that these two monolayers layers can be isolated from their bulk counterparts because their cleavage energies are comparable to that of graphene. Beyond the monolayers, constructing 2D heterostructures has become a hot topic. In type, uh, they are composed by simply stacking two monolayers together in type two. Under the effect of internal electric field, the photogenerated electrons will transfer from higher CB to lower CB. And the whole holes will transfer from lower VB to higher VB. While in this game, the electrons in lower CB will recombine with the holes in higher VB. We have constructed several type two heterostructures. However, in type two, strong redox ability and strong optical absorption cannot be achieved simultaneously. While this scheme may resolve these challenges, our design that this scheme heterostructures have strong optical absorption coefficients in the visible light regions, and the acetone bonding energy is very small. 
the larger internal electric field results in efficient separation of electron hole pairs. The water redox reaction can proceed spontaneously without external electric field. So they have high solar to hydrogen efficiency. Finally, we conclude three points. First, the design of 2D photocatalysts is very important. Second, the progress of photocatalytic water splitting is very complicated. To obtain high performance photocatalysts, experimenters and theorists should work together by taking advantage of each other's strengths. Last, the study of 2D photocatalysts needs lots of complex methods. In order to share new techniques and approaches quickly, video articles are needed and helpful. For this reason, I have opened a collection on the Journal of Visualized Experiments. This collection is a great opportunity to showcase research methods, and the recent advances. If you are interested, please submit your abstract here. At last, I would like to thank my group members, collaborators, and funding agencies. Thank you very much. <laughs>